eye exam. First, you will assess the patient's visual acuity. They may leave their contacts or glasses on for these tests since you are determining whether they need further evaluation. For the Rosenbaum test, have the patient hold the card at four arms length or approximately 14 inches. Ask him or her to cover their right eye and read the letters and numbers on the lowest line they can. Ask the patient to switch eyes and repeat. You may ask the patient to read the line backwards this time to prevent memory rehearsal. Finally, ask the patient to read the lowest line possible with both eyes open. Use the Snellen eye chart to test vision at a distance. Position the patient 20 feet from the chart. As with the Rosenbaum test, have the patient first cover one eye and read the smallest line possible. Then, switch the covered eye and repeat. Finally, read the lowest line possible with both eyes open. It is often helpful to occasionally ask the patient to read the chart backwards to prevent sheer rehearsal from memory. Always wash your hands prior to examining the external eye. Observe the eyes for ptosis, exophthalmos, lesions, deformity, or asymmetry. Spread the eyelids with your fingers and inspect the conjunctiva and sclera. Ask the patient to look up, down, left, and right to inspect the bulbar surface. Wash your hands again before proceeding to the next section of the exam. To test the patient's visual fields, stand about 3 to 4 feet in front of the patient. Instruct the patient to cover their right eye while you cover your left eye for reference. Place your other hand halfway between you and the patient towards the lateral border of your visual field. Then ask the patient to tell you when he or she sees your fingers wiggle. Move your fingers around the four quadrants and wiggle them intermittently. Then have the patient cover his or her other eye and repeat. Finally, with both eyes open, hold up both hands and ask the patient to identify which hand moves, left, right, or both. Position yourself about three feet in front of the patient. Instruct the patient to keep his or her head perfectly still, but to follow your finger with their eyes. Then, starting in the center, move your fingers in a large H pattern. Look carefully for any deviation or failure of the eyes to follow in a particular direction. Finish by bringing your finger to the patient's nose to test convergence. With your pen light just in front of your nose, shine the light in the patient's eyes. You should see the reflection slightly nasal to the center of the pupils. Asymmetry may indicate presence of strabismus. Use a pin light or the light from the otoscope to test the patient's pupillary reaction. Shine the pin light into the patient's eyes, approaching from a temporal angle. Look to see the pupil constrict on the side you shine the light, a direct response. Then look to see that the other pupil constricts as well, a consensual response. Repeat in the other eye. To test accommodation, place your finger a few inches in front of the patient's nose. Ask him or her to quickly switch focus from a point across the room to your finger. The pupils should constrict. Most patient examination rooms have a standard ophthalmoscope mounted to the wall. Adjust the aperture and diopter and adjust the light to about half maximal intensity. Dim the room light. Then, holding the ophthalmoscope in your right hand, hold it up to your right eye to examine the patient's right eye. Ask the patient to look straight ahead while you approach from a temporal angle. Brace your other hand on the patient's shoulder or forehead to gauge the distance between you. Once you elicit a red reflex, an orange glow in the pupil, follow it in through the pupil. You should be almost touching the patient's eyelashes. Find a vessel and follow it centrally to the optic disc. 
Focus your ophthalmoscope if necessary. Follow vessels out and then back in to examine all four quadrants. Then move the field of view laterally to find the macula. Repeat on the other eye. The panoptic is an alternative type of ophthalmoscope. Students should feel comfortable using both the panoptic and standard versions. First, adjust the focus by fixating on an object about 10 feet away. Adjust the rheostat to maximum light intensity. Follow the red reflex into the pupil until the eye cup contacts the brow. Compress the eye cup halfway and adjust the focus if necessary. The field of view is much larger with the panoptic. You will find you only need to tilt your head slightly to see all the features you were instructed to examine with the standard ophthalmoscope. Repeat on the other side. To test the corneal reflex, loosen the tip of a cotton applicator so you have a very small surface area. Quickly and lightly touch the tip of the applicator on the patient's cornea. The patient will blink if the reflex is intact. To use the wall mount ophthalmoscope, first press the power button on the wall mount. The rheostat, also on the wall mount, controls the light intensity. On a handheld unit, the rheostat is usually near the top of the handle. Press the green button and turn to adjust light intensity. The aperture, located on the head, adjusts the shape of the light. You will usually use the large circle. The diopter is the focus of the instrument. Set the diopter to zero if both you and the patient have 20-20 vision. If you choose not to wear your glasses or the patient has corrected vision, you will need to adjust accordingly. Always refocus after you locate the optic disc. The panoptic ophthalmoscope has an eye cup that seals over the patient's eye and the eyepiece the examiner looks through. The aperture is located near the handle you will usually use the large circle. The focus is located near the examiner's eyepiece. Focus on an object across the room before examining a patient. The examiner should not wear glasses when using the panoptic scope. 